talk, Nick fans. That's right. I am Nick Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel, guys. Uh, this interview uh, just in English, né? Be uh, later, né? I will put uh, subtitles for Brazilians. I receive in this channel today. Man, I love this channel. I love Nick's Film School, and I receive today Jonathan Macri yeah. <laughs> in this channel. And I, I so 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 happy, man. So happy. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate. I'm happy to be here. Ah, man. I so so happy, man. First of all, uh, I want né, uh, you introduce né, yourself for Brazilian fans. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so my name, as you said, is Jonathan Macri. Um, I am uh, part of Nick's Film School. Um, we have a podcast, a YouTube channel, uh, I have a newsletter, and we write about and analyze the Knicks. That's about it. Yeah, great. Uh, man, how do you start your passion with the Knicks, with the basketball? Um, how did I start my passion with the Knicks? That's a great question. I have been a fan for, I've been a fan for uh, 30 years. Um, so obviously most of my life. Um, and just followed the team as a fan for, um, you know, ever since the night, really the finals run in 93, 94 is when I really got hooked. And then uh, I started blogging about the team and about the NBA in general, just kind of as a pastime, I don't know, maybe six years ago or so. And then kind of eventually caught on with the Knicks blog, which obviously as a Knicks fan, that, that's the team that I prefer to, to talk about and write about and cover and the whole thing. And then it just kind of grew from there. Um, but yeah, I've always been passionate about the Knicks and I've always – dreamt about uh, writing about the NBA and, and talking about the NBA and analyzing the NBA for a living. So, yeah. Ah, great, man. Great. Uh, I, I want to talk with you now uh, because uh, I talk in backstage. Now. Uh, I am fan from your job. Now. I saw your live, for example, with uh, Mike Breen, man. Mike Breen in your channel yes uh, yes chris harry né? chris harry blood in the garden and so many people né? in your channel i want to talk with you ab about the knicks man about the knicks uh what's your opinion né? about uh this draft né? and uh the end of season né? uh for example uh these rumors né? with uh, uh Donovan Mitchell, uh, Jalen Brunson, né? uh, and uh, Hartenstein. Né? Uh, I, I, want, I want your opinion né? about these rumors and uh, this contract in the offseason. And uh, Leon Rose, man, I want to talk your opinions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I think they had a nice offseason so far. Um, you know, Brunson was obviously a lot of money. But it, he checks a lot of boxes for them. I mean, obviously, you know, they've needed a point guard for a long time. He is, you know, maybe he's more of a combo guard than a point guard. But I think for their purposes, I mean, the thing they really need is it, it is someone that happens to be at the point guard position. But they needed someone who can efficiently create shots and efficiently create their own offense. And... Uh, do so in a number of ways and can also kind of, you know, commandeer a lot of possessions. Now, he's not a perfect player. Uh, he's a player that likes to operate close to the basket more than anything, um, or at least in the mid-range, which is why it's not an ideal fit with the roster as currently constructed uh, because their two most prominent high-usage players, RJ and, and Julius also like to operate inside the arc if they if they had their have their preference. So, you know, that said, I, I think a lot of times people overthink this stuff. If you add a really good basketball player to your team without taking anything away, 
I think it's a good thing. And they added a really good player to their team. And probably the best thing that they lost in that process was Alec Burks and a salary dump. And Alec Burks is a nice player, but he's not, he's not Jalen Brunson. Um, so I like that. I like Hardenstein. Uh, Hardenstein's very I, – I'm really excited about some of the stuff they'll be able to do with him as a backup center. Um, that contract is fine. Uh, like Brunson. Brunson's contract is fine. I mean, he's, he's like the 50th paid, highest paid player in the league. Uh, and he's probably about the 50th best player in the league. So, you know, it's fine. Um, and then the, the Mitchell stuff, I mean, obviously there's a lot of opinions out there on it. I think it's going to depend on the cost. Um, I think it's going to, it, it'll, it's going to cost a lot. It's a matter of whether it's a lot that is still going to leave you some left over to do, you know, obviously to have a good team and, or a decent team, uh, and, and also enough to make uh, another trade down the line. Um, but like, I, I feel like, maybe sometimes people are getting a little caught up in the notion that the, 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 the thought that the Knicks need a star is an overplayed talking point from media people and talking heads. And we hear it so much. It's easy to get, you know, it's easy to be like, Oh, that's just what people say to get ratings and, 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 you know, crap on the Knicks. The reality is that the NBA more than any other league um, with the possible exception of the NFL, because you kind of need a good quarterback in the NFL, but you need a star player in the NBA to succeed because star players generate offense efficiently and they do it a lot um, with a high usage and they are usually able to make their teammates better in the process and get their teammates good shots in the process. That's what a star is. I mean, it's a shorthand, but it's it's a term that a, a, that is applied for a reason. And the Knicks don't have that. And if you don't have that, you're left to try to, you know, get water from a rock in terms of scoring. And that's really hard. And it's especially hard when you're when your primary players that are, are – that try to do that are two of the least efficient players in the league. And again, I'm referring to Julius and RJ. Now RJ is young. We hope he will get better at a lot of things. Uh, but and Br- again, Brunson helps, but like they don't, even with Brunson, they don't have anybody who creates is the kind of three level scoring threat that Donovan Mitchell is. And they, you, you, you need that. I mean, the jazz had either the best or like the second best offense in the NBA last year. Like why, why do you think that is? It's because Donovan Mitchell is really, really good at a lot of different things. So, um, yeah, they need him. It's just hopefully they, hopefully they can get him without overpaying too much. Uh, about Jalen Brunson, I saw uh, a post uh, in New York Post, né? and and I bring né, uh, Zach Brazilier in this channel. And uh, I talk with him about uh, Derek Harper. Né? Derek Harper promised uh, the Knicks fans will love né, Jalen Brunson. What's your opinion? What's your opinion about uh, Dark Harper well, saying I mean, this? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I love Har- Harper. Would have I've said it many times. Should have gotten or would have gotten the '94 Finals MVP had we won that uh, series against Houston. Um, I mean, Harper is obviously the, the TV guy, TV color guy for the Mavs. He's really good. Um, he's a homer, but he's good. Uh-huh. And like, I don't think you'll find. Like, there, there are people out there this summer criticizing the Knicks for how much money they spent on Brunson. And, like, you know, Brunson's just going to get them to this, like, middle ground NBA purgatory, um, you know, play in kind of that's the last place you want to be. All of that criticism is, I mean, whether you think it's fair or not, like, I, I get that. No one has said that Jalen Brunson isn't a really, really good player. Like, I haven't seen one player yet. I mean, saying that he's not a star. Again, that's fine because, like, he's he's not. He's not someone that really – he doesn't create offense behind the three-point arc, which if you're a guard in the NBA today and you don't do that um, yes. and you don't, you know, like get to the rim at will like a John Morant, um, it's, it's hard to be a star. That said, like, 
I said it after they signed him. If you told me that Jalen Brunson was going to make an All Star team at some point during his time with the Knicks, I wouldn't be shocked. I think it's possible. I don't think I don't necessarily think it's likely. I think, but I wouldn't be shocked. Like he's a really, really good player, and he is again just a guy that they need because he's dependable. Um, he was yes. the most, you yes. know, in, from from I've said this stat a few times on my own show, but like from two point range amongst guys who qualified and, and took enough shots to qualify. He was the most efficient player in the NBA inside the arc on um, uh, as a pick and roll ball handler. Granted, not a lot of volume, which again speaks to why he's not a star, a, a quote unquote star. But like he was the most efficient pick and roll ball handler among you know moderate volume guys, um, and that volume will probably go up now that he's not on the same team as Luka Doncic. So he's really good, and he tries his ass off on defense. I know. He's small, but I think he's good. I think the Knicks will love him. I think the Knicks fans will love him, regardless of anything else. So yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of his. Uh, man, uh, I I ask to you uh, because uh, I want your opinion uh, too. Uh, do you like this idea, uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Bru Jalen Brunson uh, yeah. playing together? Uh, because people talking about high, né? Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brunson and uh, Donovan Mitchell, small, nah, small players. But uh, I saw uh, two in your post, uh, a post talking, uh, John Starks, for example, and Eric Harper, don't, uh, I mean, don't uh, very high. Nah. It's, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a different league now. Uh, they're, you know, players, like the three-point line has changed everything. And there are so many players who can create offense behind the arc that the best way to defend that type of offense or those sorts of players in the playoffs is to switch everything. Mm -hmm. And um, teams that have the most switchable players on defense tend to be the ones that succeed the most in the playoffs defensively. And it's just tough to switch with a small guy. Um, because bigger, bigger scoring wings will take advantage. And if you look around the best teams in the league, whether it's Jimmy Butler on the heat or Jason Tatum on Boston, or obviously like LeBron is still around and Luca and Kawhi and like Devin Booker. And you, you know, you go down the list, like the best team, there's a reason these guys are in demand. These guys, the best teams have these sorts of guys. So when you have a smaller player, that guy will become probably a target. And if you have two smaller players, you know, it gets even dicier. The thing I'll say about Donovan Mitchell is it was not that long ago when he was coming out of Louisville and people touted his defense as his best quality because in the NBA, and I think I'm trying to give a good example of this, but like it's not that height doesn't matter. Height does matter, but wingspan matters a lot. And if you have some decent size, that matters a lot. And Donovan Mitchell has, I think, a 6'10 wingspan. So he's got, you know, it's like plus nine inches over his height. That's important. He's a big guy. That's important. Um, or like he's not thin. You know, he, he could he could, you know, he's not Kyle Lowry, but he's he, he's close. Um, yes. he, he, you know, he's athletic. Like that matter. Like all this stuff matters. He he should be able to defend at an above average clip for his position. And Brunson is like he's more limited athletically. But as my as my colleague uh, Ben Reynolds likes to say. That dude tries his butt off. He really does. He just and, – and you could get very far with effort, especially in a Thibodeau scheme. You know, Tom Thibodeau once had the Bulls going head-to-head -head with the Miami Heat. Not quite this era of NBA basketball, but, like, sort of resembled it. And he was, you know, playing Nate Robinson 35 minutes a night. Like, Tibbs that's, – that's why you have Tibbs is, is to get around problems like this. I'm not saying it's not going to be an issue. Yes. You know, if you get into a, a high-level playoff series and these are your two starting guards, maybe you – you know, it's, it's a situation where one of them doesn't end the game. Um, but, like, hey, those are great problems to have. And if you're a Knicks fan uh, who has been watching this team for the last 20-plus years – mostly lose uh the notion that like you're gonna have to make tough decisions and like a conference semifinals i mean please uh give me those problems i would love to have those problems uh man i i like it man uh the jalen brunson 
and uh, Donovan Mitchell playing together because uh, I believe this team uh, will be more creative. Né? Uh, For sure. Maybe, maybe people crazy about defense with with <laughs> with I mean, these guys. Matters, but like, but you, you only you only need to be able to to have a top ten. Yeah, as long as you could defend at a top ten level. And that's why, you know, the other pieces matter so much. Like, Mitchell Robinson matters a lot. And, like, R.J. Barrett matters. And, like, Quentin Grimes, yes. if you keep him, keep him out of the trade, matters. Like, all of these all of these things matter. Um, you know, but also the team that is going to be here, assuming they make this trade, is also not going to be the final product. They're going to keep making – they're going to keep making moves mm -hmm. in the years to come. That's the other – that's the other part of it. But Jonathan, do you believe uh, Donovan Mitchell comes to the Knicks? In your opinion, do you believe uh, in this negotiation? Do yeah. You, uh... I mean, if you're asking my opinion, yeah, I, I think he. I think they figure out a way to get the deal done. Sure. Uh, I believe. To, I believe too, man. I believe too, and I, I want your opinion uh, about R.J. Barrett. Man, I love. I love R.J. Barrett. Okay. Uh, I want your opinion. In your opinion, RJ Barrett uh, can be a future all star. Uh, a future all star. <sighs> That's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's possible. Uh, like, look, RJ is is just turned twenty two, so I think his best assets are the fact that he is young he's a really hard worker he has shown improvement at some aspects of his game uh over the last couple of years and i think you know not everybody has it in him has it in them to be a 30 usage rate guy and rj that's you know that's what he was for the last three and a half months of last year. And I obviously amongst other players with that usage rate in the league over that time, his efficiency was like either next to last or it was very, it was very bad. It was not good. I get that. Um, that said, I think RJ has some things going for him. I think there is playmaking upside that he has yet to tap into and can you get there? I think he get a little bit better at the rim, although I, 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 de I don't ever see him as kind of like a prolific rim finisher. But you know what? That's okay because the, the thing I probably believe in the most with him is I, I believe in his ability to draw fouls. And he averaged – I've quoted this a lot. He averaged seven free throw attempts a game over the last three and a half months of last season, which was like 11th or 12th in the league. That's significant to me. And I think he will be – he will, you know, eventually shoot 75% or so from the line long term. Um, so if you just live at the rim and you could make, and you could play make a little and you, and you get to the line, that's an outline of a really interesting player, especially when that player is RJ's size and can defend at the level that we think RJ can defend at long-term. Now, is that a star, like a, a superstar level player? No, I don't think it is because even wings like you need that perimeter aspect and i just i don't know that we're going to get to the point where rj is like you know a jason tatum level or even even like a jalen brown level off the dribble shooter from behind the arc and that's big that's in the game today if like if you're if you can't if you can't make guys pay for going under screens it's a little bit tougher for you to generate efficient offense there's one guy who's figured out a way to do it. It's Jimmy Butler. Now, Jimmy Butler yes. is also maybe the best at drawing fouls in the entire league um, among non-big men. Um, and he's also, like, the, the hardest worker in the league. And he's got – I mean, I know he's not the most efficient guy around the rim, but, like, that dude figures out a way to get a lot of those balls to go in when he drives. So – that's the only reason I'm a little bit leery of the, the Butler cops because B Jimmy Butler, is, he's a special player. Um, all that being said, if you're asking me, like, can R.J. Barrett make an all-star team, make a couple of all-star teams? Yeah, I think so. But I, he, I, I don't 
I think we're sometimes a little bit quick to christen him, you know, that that level of, of, of player. We, we got to see a little bit more. I believe in RJ Barrett. Man, the last question, man. The last question. Uh, what uh, do you can uh, talk né, uh, for us? Uh, new rumors, new rumors in New York. Man, I am from Brazil, man. I saw in Twitter né, uh, and so many platforms. But uh, do you know about new rumor uh, about the Knicks? Do you can talk uh, for us in Brazil? Oh, do I know of any new rumors? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I guess the most interesting question right now, and the Mark Stein of the of he has a Substack uh, newsletter that's very good, had something about this today that like how motivated if the Knicks get Donovan Mitchell, how motivated will they be to try to move on from Julius Randle? Um, that has been my number one question of the entire off season, putting everything else aside. It. My number one question of the offseason from day one has been, does this organization feel comfortable bringing Julius Randle back? Or is it a priority for them to try to move on from him, you know, in the right circumstance? And obviously there's different things that will go into what that circumstance is. It'll, it has to do with, you know, what are, are they getting something for him? Um, You know, we'll, I don't know. It, does it have to do with, are they going to get another ball dominant guy? Because that's, that's the other thing about the Donovan Mitchell stuff is like, no one thinks that this team makes sense with Mitchell, Brunson, RJ and Randall. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, that's probably the one thing that I would have my eye on uh, moving forward. I saw today uh, Westbrook. I, I yeah, saw... But, uh, But that's not. But that would Mark Mark clarified that as that's not that Westbrook would be coming here to play. In all likelihood, he would be coming here and be bought out. And the purpose of bringing him here would be as an expiring contract, and um, you know, with an attempt to for the Knicks to get some cap space uh, <laughs> yes. next summer. Albeit next summer is not looking to be a great free agent class. I, I mean, I know like technically right now, I think LeBron and like Harden and Kyrie and I think Chris Middleton are all scheduled at none of those guys are coming to the Knicks. Um, Andrew Wiggins is an interesting name. I know he's not. See, he, yes. He's not, yes. he's not the sexiest name, but that dude's, that dude's a good player. Um, so anyway, we'll see what happens. We'll see what they do. <laughs> Man, uh, it's the fast and uh, fast interview with you. But man, I so so so, so happy uh, bring you in this channel, man. I like so much your job, so much. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, I make it so many, so many, so much susu, uh, susu for you, na. So many great, great things, na, for you and your family, na, thank and you. your channel, man. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks yeah. so much, Jonathan. I I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I love. I love talking basketball. I'm very lucky the fact that I get to do it for a living. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's hope the rest of the offseason is a productive one, right? Okay. I hope see you again this channel, man. I, I hope you, you will like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, right. man. Well, man. Thanks so much, man. Take care. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Unifens Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Unifens Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço!
I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan, I'm a Nick fan, I'm down with the orange and the blue. I'm a Nick fan, I gotta stay true, yes I do, are you down with the orange? 